The beauty of fire is, is that it does a lot of things for you simultaneously, relatively inexpensively. We're interested in the prickly pear control, forb development, bare ground, good brooding country. But from a cattleman's standpoint, cattle that are grazing on burned country gain about 15% more than those grazing unburned country. So there's an economic incentive for the cattleman as well as for the quail guy. It's a win-win situation. Uh, and we're doing that and we're doing it inexpensively and we're doing it safely as long as it's done by trained personnel. The date of burning, the season of burning, can have a big impact on what your results are. And so we're experimenting, burning basically every month of the year to see what kind of vegetation response that we get. This was burned on August the 5th. It was 100 degrees. Relative humidity was, was fairly high, about 30% for a summer burn. Winds about six to 10 miles an hour. And we had pre-treated it with two quarts of Roundup. I like what I see from this. Number one is we got a heck of a burn down on the prickly pear. A February fire might give us 20, 30% control. An August fire might give us 50 or 60% control. At this point in the game, it looks like we've got over 80% pad reduction. But what makes me giddy about this particular combination is the amount of forbs that we grew. We got a lot of weeds coming up out here as a result of bare ground and then September precipitation. We're growing a lot of Texas fillery and California fillery. Those are two little annual weeds that quail seem to really like. This is called Tasahia cactus, pencil cactus, turkey pear, jumping cactus. From a quail hunting standpoint, it's a real nuisance. Uh, it, it'll just get all in you. And Tasahia fire alone can give us a real good control of that. So when we get into some areas that have a lot of Tasahia, just that initial fire will probably knock it back enough that we'll be pleased. We would not have to apply a herbicide just for the sake of killing Tasahia. Looks like we got about two to five. Maybe this one. The bird's alive. Be sure to check on him then now right after the plane front goes through. Okay. Make sure that that this uh, this north side is gets burned in pretty well, kind of get us maybe a third of the way down, and then you know, based on that, you can go ahead and start working your way up. Okay. The technique we're using is called strip back firing. We have a staggered approach here where torch number one takes a small bite, torch number two takes a larger bite, torch number three takes a larger bite. If we're, as a result of having all three of those torches, now we've got a sufficient area black lined that we can run our head firing to. We're trying to devise a more quail friendly approach to prickly pear management. And the basis of that is still going to be prescribed burning, but we're going to be burning in every month of the year to see what our vegetation response is, cool season fires as well as warm season fires. And we want to note not only how much prickly pear control do we get, but what is the impact on things like western ragweed, doveweed, some of those annual and perennial forbs that are really important to quail. I did a good job of, uh, of protecting our quail houses out there. And so it, another successful burn down. That makes 35 here at the Research Ranch over the last year. And we still have a perfect safety record. So let's not rest on our laurels. Uh, stay sharp and hopefully we'll have 36 the next one. We ought to be learning something from every fire that we do. And I hope you take advantage of that. And uh, Seth, why don't we have you and Becky continue to stay over here for the next couple of hours and just mop up. Just make sure we don't have anything that might jump across the fire line, and otherwise uh, we'll see you on the next burn. Okay, sounds good. Let's go.